Let's, let's get to the floor show. Joining me now, Fitzgerald Group Principal Keith Fitzgerald and Wilmington Trust Chief Economist Luke Tilley. Keith, let me just start with this. We're looking at the third straight quarterly loss and a lot of turbulence in the markets. How do you think October and the start of Q4 is going to play out? You know, that's an interesting question. I think it depends entirely on two things. Number one, the Fed. Will it continue on this course despite an overwhelming and mounting body of evidence that suggests it is making yet new mistakes to build on the ones it's already made? And second, will the administration continue to pour fuel on the fire via spending? Now, other than that, frankly, Liz, it doesn't much matter. I'd love to see October get a bottom, but that depends on those two things. Those two things. But what are you doing... Listen, you and I have talked and you've said that you were picking certain stocks here because they have come down meaningfully and yet they continue, many of them, to come down. Are you still on that path of averaging in, laddering into those names? Without question, Liz, because we know what happens next. History is very clear. It doesn't matter whether we're talking about the financial crisis of 1873, 1973, or what's happening now. The night is always darkest before dawn. If you have a long-term perspective, companies like Apple and Lockheed Martin and Costco are not going to go anywhere anytime soon. They're growing by double-digit rates, even with a threat of a recession or an economic pullback. Customers must have what they sell. That's very different from Nike yeah. and Peloton yeah. and Zoom and some of these other things that are just getting shellacked because they've got poor business models. Well, Luke, let's get you in here. This quarter, the big jump scare for the markets, it was August CPI. I mean, that was a shocker to the upside. So it feels like right now the market can't really seem to focus on positives like weekly jobless claims that just came in at five-month lows or strong job creation. So tell me, is this going to be a continuing issue until the Fed ends its interest rate hike cycle? Yeah, I couldn't agree more that the real key is what the Fed is doing and how inflation comes in. Some of those dynamics and the strong start to the summer and the quarter had to do with people expecting that inflation was moving down and that the Fed was going to ease back. And of course, that changed pretty quickly. We do expect inflation to slow appreciably. We're seeing prices of a lot of things fall, like used cars, but it's not showing up in the inflation report. We see consumers pulling back on a lot of things. Uh, so we expect inflation to move back down. You know, these things can bounce around from one report to the next. That said, the strong labor market that you just asked about, Liz, is one of those threats to the upside. The Fed is very worried that if it remains strong and wages push higher, that consumers can handle these price hikes. Uh, and in that case, they would just keep hiking. Yeah, you know, Dow Jones Industrial is now down 295, low of the session, a loss of about, well, I saw 368. Uh, so we're, we're kind of coming off the floor, but we saw this kind of pattern yesterday, didn't we, Keith? We did, and this is the computers playing with each other's games. You know, this is a race to the bottom on one hand, but at the same time, wait, 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 here's on, the interesting explain dynamic. Explain that, explain that, because you say computers racing to the bottom. You're talking about the algos, right, the algorithms. Explain that to our viewers who might not fully grasp how computer trading really moves an entire market. I'm happy to. So this is an area that should be talked about quite a lot more. Thank right, you for asking. Right. So, so behind the scenes, there are huge computers that drive everything from the indices to the ETFs to the mutual funds that you own. When the underlying stocks move for whatever reason, the computers then have to race with each other to rebalance all of those funds. So what happens is you have huge swaths of the market trading so fast humans can't keep up and effectively on autopilot when the selling starts, which means they just simply cascade down until all of the risk limits are hit and the buyers lose their mojo. Then it reverses to the upside. That's why the volatility is what it is today. We had uh, Dennis Gartman yesterday on, and he's widely followed, Luke. I know you know who he is, but he said he guarantees that about three months from now, stocks will be lower than where they are right now. So the market is different from the economy. But right now, the market is really moving in lockstep, but, but, lockstep, but mostly with negative econo data. Do you see any positives here? X, the labor market, which in a way is a negative, as you say. It's an upside risk for a lot of investors. Yeah, I think there are some positives for the economy. There, earlier this morning, we found out data that consumers are still spending on services. They're slowing down, uh, but 
still spending and the spending does seem strong. And I think the other positive is uh, exactly what Keith was talking about. Even the humans are starting to look at this downdraft in equities down 20 to 25 percent is the basic average downturn when you have a fairly mild recession. And if there is a recession ahead, we do think it is on the milder side. So we could be plumbing the lows. It could go a little bit lower from here. Mm -hmm. But the markets are going to be ahead of that turn in the economy. And that could happen anytime. So I definitely don't give guarantees. Uh, but uh, we, we're looking for those opportunities as well. Well, nobody should, <laughs> certainly not with the stock market. Uh, and, and Keith, we can't ignore the spiking the spiking yields, right? And, and by the way, obviously at 3.797% right now, the 10-year yield is off the highs of the past 72 hours where it punched into touching 4% earlier. But this really sucks some energy out of the stock market and into the bond market if people feel that they should rather park their money in the two or the 10 just to get a better yield and a little bit of safety and guaranteed return. Well, it does. And that's the game the Fed thinks it's playing. They're trying to suck money out of the market. I mean, don't forget what they're doing. They're, they deliberately want you to lose your job and crater the economy to result in demand destruction. Fancy way of saying they want things to go down. When that happens, the money begins to lose the illusion of growth in the stock market and move to the comparative safety of bond market. What people don't realize is that the bond market is three, four, five times the size of the stock market. So they may be getting out of the pot into the boiling water or, so, or however that expression goes. I can't recall exactly how that goes, but that, that's a, a very unusual predicament to be in at a very unique point in history. Yeah, well, this is a unique point in history, folks. It's very rare where we see rising yields, we see rising inflation, yep. uh, and a very strong job market. Highly unusual. I don't envy uh, the position that Jay Powell and the Federal Reserve are in. Everybody is complaining. Mm -hmm or supporting them. It's like they are trying to work on bringing prices down. We shall see if they're able to thread that needle and do it safely for the economy. Keith Fitzgerald, Luke Tilly, great to have you. Thank you on this Friday. Thank and on you. this last day, folks. Hi, it's Keith here. Thanks for checking out today's highlight clip. What'd you think? Did I make sense? Is there something you'd like to add? Make sure you leave a comment down below. And of course, click subscribe to keep up right here on YouTube or sign up for the email newsletter at the link below. You can also find me on Twitter and Instagram for my real-time thoughts on markets, analysis, and a whole lot more.